here's the deal. These past few months, we've had an outpour of positive reception from you guys around what we're creating, and we really want to get that game out to you sooner. That's why we're diving right into early access on September 24th, 2024. All right, y'all, it's time to talk about Forever Winter and how the early access is going. So far, the reception for early access was a little mixed when it first launched, but it seems to have moved to mostly positive on the Steam charts. So, because this is a super early access title, it is very rough, definitely needs some work, but again, it is an early access. This is like a super early access alpha game right now. So what they have done right definitely is the graphics, the environments, the story that they have created, what they can create, the lore of the world, and a bunch of other mechanics in the game right now are perfect, and they can definitely build a lot on top of this. So what does the game need to fix? The game needs to fix a little bit about the AI. Some of the AI you'll notice right off the bat if you're playing this game enough, the AI needs some work. Second, the, the enemy spawns need some work as well. The fact that enemies can spawn like in the next next room over and then just come over and start fighting you, that feels kind of cheap. That feels kind of cheap. I think that would need to change. I'm not sure how they plan on working this going forward. Maybe have them spawn off map and then move into the map. Maybe that would work because they already have enemies that spawn off map and then move into the map. So they need to cut some of the spawn points that are actually in the game because getting spawn on top of or having enemies spawn in the next room while you're already fighting people that that's uh that's gonna frustrate some people a few more things that you'll probably notice if you play the game the ui the user interface does not feel fully complete doesn't feel fully fleshed out yet there's some hotkeys that seem to be missing that you would think they would be there and this will probably get uh, patched in as they get more player feedback but that's one thing I definitely notice. Another thing is not having a crosshair felt very weird. Like they have a hit marker, but they didn't have a crosshair. So at first I thought they were doing some type of hyper realistic feeling for the game, but then the hit marker kind of negates that. I'm not sure about that, but it felt, it felt kind of strange not having a crosshair. Another thing they'll probably work on, but this probably isn't a priority, but is definitely the character animations especially the main character that you control you're staring at this character all the time because the character animations at the moment it feels a little floaty it feels like they're walking on air a little bit because their legs their legs their feet they don't move with a terrain so you notice when playing your character your character will look like they're floating or their body parts will go through walls very very easily or their feet will go through the floor a little bit Another thing is some of the interactions with the environments. There is a way to actually climb certain pieces of the environments, but it feels very, uh, it feels a little janky sometimes because like you're running, you're trying to jump, but you get caught on this like invisible little piece of scrap on the floor. And it's just like, why did I just jump straight in the air when I was trying to jump forward over the scrap? Something like that, they'll probably work on it as, as well but I don't think it's a priority at the moment, but that's just something on the list that they should cross off. You can tell this is a heavy futuristic apocalypse type of world right here. And it feels like they've taken a lot of inspiration from like Metal Gear Solid type of games, Fallouts, the Terminator movies, and Death Stranding. How futuristic and strange the world is. There's mechs, there's machines, there's androids there's also probably some other strange stuff that they'll eventually add into the game but what the game is potentially capable of doing what it has at the moment and what we know about the game right now there's a lot of possibilities a lot of paths this game can go in lots of directions they can try and take they could actually delve deeper into taking more inspiration from like metal gear death stranding or fallout games even if they don't take anything more from those games or sources of media they still have a lot here that they can work with. Just they have multiple factions fighting for resources. 
they have the androids, which we don't even know, like, the lore and story behind these androids yet. But there's a lot of ways they can take this game. It should be interesting how they lay out the lore and the story of this game. Because they have plenty of time to go in any direction that they so choose. Also, I want to mention something else. That the music, the original OST for this game, it matches the scene very well. It matches the game very well. The background that's going on that's happening because it feels fairly futuristic why you see all this destruction in the background all this fire going on all of the gunfire the soldiers and the machines fighting each other surprisingly they made it fit very well into what the game is actually doing now i don't believe anyone should have to pay more than 50 usd for a game and if you want to support the team above and beyond the initial price point that is awesome and we really appreciate it there will be a special edition with the game's soundtrack and Jason's awesome tunes. But that should be your choice, based on how much you guys dig the game. So the Forever Winter is going to be $27 at early access. There will be zero pay-to-win solutions. You will earn your gear via skill or luck, and you will not be able to buy your way into Nirvana. You will never be charged for a new character, because that's the way it should be when you buy a game. You will not be charged for maps, guns, additional quests, new bosses, and more. That nickel and diming shit is for the birds. We will charge for skin packs, and any sales there will go to supporting the character team and allowing us to make even more baller characters in the future. Now why do all this? I fondly remember a time growing up in the 90s when you could go to Comp USA and buy a box copy of Command and Conquer, Giant Citizen Kabuto, or KKND for 50 bucks or less and be set for months. I'm really hoping we can get back there. As long as Fun Dog Studios stay true to their word, that means in the future that the only thing we'd have to pay for is skins if we desire them. So you have the game, you have the OST, and skins in the future. So any future content updates they have for the game will be completely free. I'm sure a lot of people love to hear this, but we'll just see how it goes in the future. They have lots of plans for this game. Now for the roadmap. We really respect what the homies did with Ready or Not. Having the balls to release Greybox maps into their map lineup was incredible. So we're taking a page out of their book. We will give you one work in progress map early, so you guys can scope it out, have some fun, and hopefully give the team some super helpful feedback, so we can make them even more kick-ass when they drop fully. Taking it one step further, we want the community to get a chance to vote on which bosses and which features we bring online first in our post-launch plan. Anyone who bought the game will get access to an exclusive channel in our Discord. There, you will be able to vote on what or who drops next. The art team and our brothers at Evolve 512 broke our backs to make sure we planned months in advance to give you guys the post-apocalyptic road trip you deserve. And if the game does well, shit. We want to bring this art style to entirely new environments in the future. It's going to be a wild ride. So with that being said, it looks like future updates are going to be influenced by some of the members of the Discord. So not just the development team. So certain maps, bosses, enemy types, weaponry, I'm sure everything. I'm sure there's little things here and there that I missed. But they're all going to be influenced by some of the actual players that play the game. And we'll see how that plays out for them. So far it looks like they're trying to have some kind of relationship with some of the player base that they have created. And some of their supporters as well. So we'll see how this plays out. And they also said they want to take this to completely different environments for them. So if they mean in-game, I'm sure there's plenty. They already have like desert. They can take this game to like different forest areas, different snowy areas. There's a ton of different ways they can actually play with the environments. So it should be interesting to see what they actually do with it. Another way I took that is if the game does well, you might be thinking of taking this like story, lore, and background of the game into another genre of gaming completely. So they might throw this into like some type of real-time strategy or maybe even a turn-based game like XCOM or something like that, which would be cool if they actually managed to do so. I guess only time will tell with that. Now let's talk hosting. Regardless of how many people play, you will always be able to play with your friends locally and via peer-to-peer -peer hosting. 
we learn from the nightmares some of our industry colleagues have gone through this past year. So that means no infinite loop matchmaking bugs and no flooded servers where you can't jump into what you just bought. We did this so that no matter what happens, when you buy our game, you can jump in and rock and roll, even if it's solo. If you want to reach out to the dev team, hit up the Discord. There's a ton of homies in there that love Grimdark just as much as we do. Now on a more somber note, these past few months, we lost Spec Ops The Line, Project Boundary, and now they are shutting down the Battlefield 3 servers. The reality is, in the never-ending quest for profit, they are closing the gate on some really special games that inspired us. Games cost more now to develop than they ever have, and that means risk mitigation is priority one, two, and three. And remember, it's not their fault. They're a product of their environment. And that's why this year has been so inspiring to see other crews breaking out of that muck to bring the magic, one ammo belt at a time. So because multiplayer games are gonna be peer-to-peer -peer and they're not gonna require servers to actually play, eventually once this game stops being updated and they move on to their next projects, the game will still be in a functional state for 10, 20 years down the line because they won't have to actually maintain the servers. And because they're not maintaining servers and it's peer-to-peer, -peer, that means that there's no there's going to be no server downtime, there's going to be no wait, so you can jump in, play solo, or try and jump in with friends at any time, 10, 20 years down the line when they move on to their next project and they don't have to constantly manage forever winter. Lastly, words cannot express how much we appreciate your support. People from all nations and all ages have reached out, just to say, thanks for going there and handling the subject with the care and energy it deserves. This means we're not alone in hoping we see a new kill zone, a gritty battlefield, maybe a new Command & Conquer title that's not a bloody mobile game. But if the response to what we're building is any indicator, maybe they will find the guts to bring those games back the right way. I'm also excited to see what they actually do with this game. The story, the environments, the graphics, the lore that they're trying to build, and they can eventually take this world into different gaming genres. I can definitely see this game becoming an RTS or maybe even like a turn-based survival strategy game like XCOM or some type of offshoot of XCOM type of combat system. But anyway, that's all for me. Thanks for watching. Good luck out there.